All right, guys, good afternoon and welcome to uh, this portion of, of uh, this webinar, Holiday Trade and what is a holiday trade. I'll explain that in just a few minutes, a little bit about myself. Like Reed said, I've been trading uh, for a number of years. Actually, that's kind of old copy right there. I've been trading for over 30 years now in the market. And uh, I started out of agricultural industry. I was an institutional grain trader. I was not on the floor. I was a screen trader back when I started in the in the 80s. And uh, I've been trading since. Now I had a, an opportunity to trade a lot of money because when you trade for other people you are trading, you end up with a big responsibility of trading for them. You're giving them suggestions. They've got money with you. Uh, you're putting money to work in the market. And if you think this is uh, bad trading for yourself, that it's got a little bit of pressure up under it, go trade for someone else. And when you take your job with uh, a high rate of seriousness, that it sometimes can be, uh, it's very stressful because your objective, your your process of everything is you're trying to make money for other people. And uh, you deal with losses pretty hard. So I came up trading in a way that uh, trading in the grain markets, in the agricultural markets, I've traded just about everything that you can think of over 30 years and still trade quite a bit, but I've narrowed things down to probably trading uh, six or seven markets uh, primarily every day at tradethesystem.com. That's where I hang out every day in a live trading room and to uh, give people an opportunity. What I try to do is, is show people what I do on a day-to-day -day basis because I trade live. And of course, this portion, you've probably seen all the warnings today. Basically, you've got to be aware of all the risk that you're taking when you trade futures. And if you can't afford to be trading, don't. Don't take your uh, last thousand dollars and think that you're going to make something out of it. And as we start in here, the holiday trade it kind of got started this way from an old article that's been around probably close to 100 years, something called Voice of the Tomb. And the Voice of the Tomb is, some people say it's a myth, a legend, whatever, but the uh, Voice of the Tomb was basically a grain trader that had made his fortune trading seasonal markets in the grains. He was a pit trader in Chicago and uh, he had done extremely well. His wife got sick and she passed away and this millionaire grain trader committed the rest of his life to, to trading and raising his kids that were left. And the kids ended up being lazy. They uh, they thought that they were just going to get the millions that their father had handed to them, that their father had earned handed to them. And uh, that wasn't what he was thinking. He thought the best thing that he could do for his kids was to teach them the value of money. And the only way he could do it was to give them the opportunity to trade the way he traded and the way he made the money. So he left when he died, he left in his will the dates of when to buy and sell certain crops. And that if they would adhere and strictly adhere to the, this advice that he left him, that they would be able to work on their own and make a fortune like he had. And it wouldn't, it would uh, it'd be something that they had worked for, not something that just someone handed to them. Well, what does the voice of the tomb have to do with today? Well, is it still a viable trade setup? Yes, it is. But there's been a lot that has changed about it. Uh, let me check this one thing here. Michael, it would be based on every holiday that you could think of. 
And uh, what is the driving force behind the dates in these trades? Now, how many of you guys have ever traded uh, agricultural products before? Corn, soybeans, wheat, soybean meal, soybean oil. Could be cotton. Could be uh, could be basically most of those uh, are the are the biggies. It could be cattle. Uh, corn options. A few of you traded corn options in the options market. The outright futures, guys. That's uh, pretty much what we're dealing with. What I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And but I also trade in the equity side of it, trading the E-mini S&P in the E-mini Dow. Uh, trade the Nasdaq. Trade the bonds. Look at uh, and trade gold. And uh, and crude oil, in all of those. Now, based off of the the uh, agricultural markets, we at one point in time we were pretty much tied into just a market in the United States that uh, it was pretty much segmented that the United States was the driving force behind it. Now we've got an international market in the way that things have changed, and I'll cover this in a few minutes. We've we're running. 12 months out of the year, there's always something growing in the ground someplace that people are trading off of. Now, how many of you guys remember this movie right here? Trading Places. Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Y'all remember that? Have y'all seen that movie? Good movie. Y'all remember what they were trading? What, they, what the premise of this one was? They were trying to get Eddie Murphy in there, who they picked up off the street. That's right, Matt. Orange juice. They and what was the driving force behind this trade? Anybody remember that? A report. That's right. It was a crop report, and they were looking for the crop report. The two brothers were looking for this crop report to be released. And uh, Meeks giving them information, that's right. And what they were going to do, they were going to trade this crop report, and they said anybody could trade it given the, given the certain information. Well, that was in the movie. This is still live today. If, uh, if you've traded, the, what took place back when that movie was made basically no longer exists. When you take a look at the pits now in Chicago, they're mostly empty. It's like a, uh, it's almost like a graveyard. 95% uh, of the trading is now done electronic. Open outcry is almost dead. And crop reports are still very much alive. Matter of fact, we just had one with the USDA having the uh, acreage report that was right here at the beginning of April. No, it's the end of, end of the last day of March. And uh, that was the first pretty big report of the year that we got started on when it comes to corn, soybeans, things of that nature. Tomorrow, we've got a, a report coming out, but it's in energy. It's off of the uh, uh, energy production. And we're going to see how much how much crude oil, what we've done, the, the stocks report off of that, and what type of stockpile of crude oil that we've amassed, or are we using it and drawing it down a little bit? Now, when are these reports released, the crop reports, things of that nature? Uh, is the information in the report really necessary for the holiday trades? And lastly, what effect does the crop report have in the market? The crop report has a big effect in the markets. Is it necessary to know the information for the holiday trades? No, it's not. The key is when these reports are released. If you're trading in the futures market, you need to make sure that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you need to know when every one of these reports are issued. Why? because it can move the market. Like tomorrow morning, uh, no, uh, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow morning, 
we have the petroleum status report at 10.30 Eastern Time. Uh, Thursday, you all ought to know that jobless claims come out at 8.30. Uh, Bloomberg Consumer Comfort Index on Thursday at 9.45 Eastern. Then you've got a natural gas report at 10.30 Eastern. You've got to know that for these reasons because these reports trigger people into trading. They don't care what the report says. What you're trading, you're trading the chart. You're trading the reports. And that is a key important part for you to take care of. Uh, now, where do you find, if I can get my mouse back over to it, here we go. Where do you find these reports? You can go to, and I will put this in here, um, USDA has a report, and hold on and I'll throw it up here on the screen for you guys. If you don't know this address, you need to, you need to uh, take it down. I'll throw it over here. Let me copy it. I'll paste it over here in the chat window for everybody to see and copy. There you go. Make sure you copy that down. Why? All right, let's take a look at it. Here's March. This is just what was reported. These reports right here, this was a live report issued on the grain stocks report, and this is what it would look like when it comes through. Uh, this was 2014. I don't know why it hit the 14, but well, it should be. This is what it would look like for 2015. I don't. Uh, Corn stocks up 11% from March 14th. Okay, this is right, March 31st, 15th. Soybean stocks were up 34%. All wheat was up 6%. Now, people don't take these. Some do who are fundamental traders. They'll take these and look at them and read them and go, okay, I want to make a trade. Well, this report, the key thing that you need to know more than anything is this time that it comes out. These come out during the trading day, and it can make some awfully big moves in the market as soon as it's released. Now, if you take a look at this on the 31st, and let me see if I can get this in here, and I'll show you. I think this is... Uh, the 27th, the 30th, 31st, yeah, right here. Take a look at this, guys. Well, it's not going to come up. Can't show it to you. It will, I can show it to you. Let me change screens here real quick. All right, here's wheat. Here is the 27th, 30th the 31st. Look at the range here. We went from 531 to 509 on the 31st. Big, big move. Market was up the previous day. The crop report came out. It tanked, and now you can see what happens. Now, why is all this important? It's important for you to know when these reports come out because it moves the market in a tremendous fashion. If you looked at uh, soybeans, on a on the 31st in here if I can find it let's see where is it uh, 30th 31st look at the move that we had here from uh, 951 to 981 almost a, a 30 a 30 cent move in the market that's like a 30 handle move in the s p and most of that occurred between 11 o'clock central and the market closed at 115. Big movement. So if you're trading the agricultural markets, you've got to know when these reports come out. Now, there are certain trades that pop up around holidays that I deal with in our trading room all the time. Almost every uh, every month, we've got something going on 
or every couple of months that could be some uh, a very strong move in the market based off some type of some or based around some type of holiday. These are seasonal trades. They occur over and over again, and there's a it's a massive amount of them. Do I trade the ES mini ES and uh, mini ES? Yes, I do. That's uh, probably one of my biggest contracts I trade. Now, do you know this one? What commodity contract do you trade around St. Patrick's Day? This commodity futures contract's been a winner 31 out of 40 years. And this was uh, this was put together. It's now in the in the realm of uh, 32 out of 41. The average holding period is 23 days. I don't know if you guys are position traders or not, but these are mostly position trades, and they can make quite a bit of profit for you. Hops? No, it's not hops. It, it's it's not barley either. Uh, <laughs> which is most of you guys who might be consuming things around St. Patrick's Day, y'all might know what that is. Yeah, lucky charms. Now, the average holding period, 23 days, even in 2008 with a bullish commodity run, because almost everything that we had was bullish, the trade was a winner. This is a trade where, where you fade the market, you look for a seasonal sell-off in it, the seasonal tendency worked with a potential profit of an average of about seventeen hundred and thirty dollars over the period over these past forty one years, forty years. A sale signal was given this year before March the seventeenth. It's not exactly on St. Patrick's Day, but when you know that these seasonals are coming up, you put them on your calendar and you start looking for them. And when you start seeing these markets ramp up, even sometimes before the holidays, you can take a pretty good move off of it. So far this year, it's had a $2,690 move since the sales signal was generated in early March. That's on one contract. Now, how would you trade it? Would you trade it on auctions? You might trade it in ETFs. You wouldn't have the leverage as you would in the futures contract, and you might just take outright futures contract. On this particular case, a short position. Now, like I said, you've got to know when these reports happen. Last couple of years, we've had some huge moves. Uh, this particular move off of the crop report was a soybean move that we saw a 74 cent move in one day. Do you think it's important to know that something's happening if you're going to try to trade the grain markets? It, it would be like you putting on a position in the E-mini S&P right before FOMC announcement, the Federal Open Market Commission announced a change in interest rates. And you were pretty much blindsided that this report came out at, most of the time at, say, 1 o'clock and you missed the boat and you had a heavy position in the S&P long and maybe they raise interest rates and all of a sudden the S&P tanks. You just have, you have to know these things. Now, what's changed since the voice of the tomb? Have times changed? Yeah, back when this guy was trading in the agricultural markets, it was an open outcry pit. Guys were riding around on tractors like this and if you farmed a you know, 500 to 1,000 acres, you are a massive farmer. It was mostly family-owned farms in the United States. The equipment was a whole lot better than a, a horse and a plow. But what we're looking at now, yeah, times have changed. I think everybody would agree with that. How have these times changed? The times have changed where you might see a guy now farming 10,000 acres and he's pulling a planter like this. If you've been around as long as I have, you see the slide on the left before 2008, 
2007, 2006, when the market started going electronic, when the pits were full, to where we are now after 2008. And if I had a picture of it today, it would look like it would make the, the print on the right at 2008 look like the market was really full back in 2008. Now, the weather has probably changed also. Yeah, it's, it's all because of global warming. The, the crops grow too fast now, so, so if you believe all that, you know, you, you can't, when you get to trading this, after a news release, we have initial volatility, and then it goes back to the original direction of that trade. A lot of times, Vic, it does. Now, along with that, you can make thousands of dollars off of these trades when you see the crop reports come out. I do it every time I see a crop report. Uh, I caught one trade the other day, and it ended up being a little bit over $1,100 off of that trade, trading a couple of contracts. Uh, not seeing screen changes. You might have to log out and log back on. Um, let me see here on the audience view. Okay, I see. All right, hold on. Let me go back, guys. I'm sorry, that's my fault. Don't log out. Don't log out. No, no, no. There we go. One, two, three. Come on. There we go. That's what we're looking at. All right, let me go back. That's what we were looking at there. Thanks, guys. Keep me on my toes here. I'd change, I'd change monitors. When I have, you've got as many monitors as I do, you kind of jump around off of these things and you get lost sometimes. Okay, there's that one. There's the, uh, that's what it looks like today. Now, as I was showing about the pit, there's the pit before 2008, after 2008, and now it's probably even more empty that the the a lot of the pits they're are doing away with them this year uh, like in New York the energy pits there won't be a crude oil pit anymore it's all electronic now again as I mentioned you need to know when the reports are released uh, it's the most important what's the most important information that's a, the most important information also do you guys know what the managed money right now let's say if you are trading in the energy markets and let me see throw this up for you if I can get this to to come back up again here we go We'll, like, uh, we'll do the analysis of it. Commitment of traders analysis. Have you guys ever looked at this? Y'all seen this? This is a commitment of traders report. It comes out once a week. Do y'all follow it? Now, this is the kind of analysis of the report. Now, let's go to the real thing. Commitment of Traders, it's a weekly report that comes out. And if you want to know, let's say you're trading the energy products and you're trading crude and you want to know what, I wonder what the managed money is doing in the market. You can go to the Commitment of Traders report and let me get down to the West Texas Intermediate, which is what we trade. So ice, New York, crude, right here. All right. Here you go. This is light, sweet crude. All right. Take a look at this. Managed money. You see this right here? Off of managed money? Right here. Now, what does that do? What is that telling you? off of that. Let's get with something in here that looks a little more vibrant for you. Here are the longs right here. Here are the shorts right here. This is contracts and the number of contracts that we've got. 
Now, the shorts have 149,222 contracts as of last week. The long positions, where do you think managed money is putting their money? It's telling you right here, 324,000 contracts. What's happening here? The shorts are reducing their positions, 23,000 contracts. The longs are increasing their positions. Now, managed money, what is managed money? That's the commodity funds, things of that nature that uh, people are trading. Now, you can also go in there and take off of this report. You can go in there on agricultural products. Uh, here's soft red winter wheat in Chicago, which is what we're trading. And you can see managed money here, long positions, 52,000 contracts. 124,710 are short. Where is the managed money putting, where are they putting their dollars? Off of the short side. Why is that important to know? If you follow these every week, it's not a bad idea to know when you're getting the big bulk of the, a lot of the market that is beginning to change positions and beginning to change directions in the market. Now, it not only has that, but you can go down and take currencies. You can take a look at different things in the market that you've got here. And um, if you want to take a look at, uh, at gold, you can take a look at gold in here and, and determine what the managed money is doing that way. All of these different things that you can pick up off of the Commitment of Traders report. Well, you need to know you need to know that off of the commitment of traders report. Now, what happens? These reports would cause what in the market? It causes market volatility. Here, four days in this uh, contract here, this was soybeans, a four day move, forty seven hundred dollar move. How do you trade these types of moves? First of all, like I was showing, you've got to know what the people are doing who are trading in the market. They're speculators and they're hedgers. You need to know what the speculators are doing. That's the managed money. The hedgers, basically, are they going to be looking toward the short side the big majority of the time. I showed you live of last week's thing, last week's commitment of traders report. Here's one from last year in what people were doing in soybeans. Long, short. Uh, this is this is what I'm looking for, manage money to see what's happening, what's changing along with that. And you can see the changes from week to week because it comes out every week. Producers, merchants, those are the guys who are growing it and using it in terms of end products in the agricultural side of it. Now, the seasons of change. Seasonalities are based on historical trends and it's been one of the most accurate predictors of price for a long time. You can follow open interest daily, but that's different, Antonio. Antonio says you can follow open interest daily at the CME site. Well, you know what? If I could pull it up here, which I can't, I don't think, because, let me see if this is it. No, wrong one. If you want to follow along, I don't know if any of you guys use TradeStation or not, but you can do this. You will notice if you've got it on TradeStation, you get open interest every day. This is the amount of this is the number of contracts that are actually trading every day. This is updated every day, right here. You can follow it along. You don't have to go to the CME website. You've got it right here. If you trade, tra if you have TradeStation, it's giving it to you. It also shows you what the volume was every day. It's not a bad idea to go in and take a look. I am a huge proponent of volume. I watch volume all the time. Now, if you go in on a daily chart and you pick up. Uh, where is it? View data window. You can go in here and you can view 
the data on a daily chart every day and you can see what the volume is doing. You can tell when the volume is increasing, when it's growing. So let's say that volume is growing and you're seeing price continue to rise you know that you've got a pretty strong trend, especially if managed money comes in. So if you see some huge changes in the market, you can follow volume every day. Now I follow volume all day long and I'm watching it on a chart like this down at the bottom right here. I'm watching volume because you have to read volume and I want to know I trade, the big bulk of my trading is done 8.30 to 9.30 and usually I'm finished trading for the day. Uh, yesterday I, I traded, I was pretty tied up with something yesterday and I traded, uh, one, I put on one contract just because I was so tied up and I thought, you know, this thing's going up, I just want to make sure, I want to see if this is really going like I think it's going to go. Well, it did. The market made a pretty, pretty strong move and off of that move, one contract in the S&P, uh, $490 profit. Uh, is that a world beater? No, but how many of you guys made $490 on one contract yesterday? Almost 100 points out of the E-mini uh, S&P. Now, the seasons changed and the seasonalities continue to work. The only difference is we now have the international seasonality, and I'm going to speed this up because I have I have no idea what time I have to finish. Um, I know I got 45 minutes, so I'm going to speed through it. The international demand is on the increase. Look at this chart here. Back in 2003, this is China. They were a net exporter of grains. Now look where they are, and this is up through 2013. No matter, no telling where it is, 2015. They are a net importer of grains, especially corn, uh, distillate products. They, they pick up a lot, a lot of wheat, they, a little bit of rice, uh, corn, soybeans, all these products. They are now net importers. China's a pretty big market. Now, also global wheat exports. You can see what the United States is doing in how wheat exports are continuing and projected to be going out from where we are right in here out to these levels. So you've got an international market that is trading all the time. Now, if you're going to trade the holiday trade or the voice of the tune, what I call the new voice of the tune, you've got to do it with the system. Now, what's the holiday trade? The holiday trade are trades that develop around the market, around holidays. Uh, I could go back in and I will, let me pull up a chart here in soybeans and I will show you a market that you may not have caught the top of. And let me change screens again. Now, and I'm going to I'm going to throw one in here for you. Um, let's go back in to 4th of July last year. Uh, I got better. Let's go back to the first holiday trade. The first one that I was going to share. Uh, anybody know what happens around the end of May, first part of June? What holiday is it? Quick, quick, quick. What is it? Anybody know? End of May. M M Mother's Day, <laughs> Memorial Day. I uh, always a clown somewhere. Yeah, Memorial Day. All right, here's Memorial Day. Uh, let's go the day before Memorial Day. May twenty third, two thousand fourteen. You know what happened the day after Memorial Day? You right here. You know what? The high of the market was the day before. Let's see how far this little market dropped from Memorial Day to the end of October, the end of September. Let's see. 923. 
from a high of 1345. Almost a four dollar move. Almost twenty thousand is probably a twenty thousand dollar move right here on one contract. I was shouting from the rooftops in our trading room, guys get ready, get ready, get ready. Memorial Day, take these trades, take these trades. Get short. Sell in May and go away. Not necessarily because I could have shown you some years before for you to almost been able to make this much on the upside. Case in point, let's go back into March, April, May. That supposedly holds true. Here you got a May contract in here. This was uh, 2013. The market rallied came back in, there was another holiday in here, came back in, take July the 4th, around here, the market rallied and then sold off, and then you come in on another one, Labor Day. And the market, oh, look, the day after Labor Day, that was the high of the market, and then it tanked. Guys, that's not only, that's a few of them. Do I have a list of the seasonals? Yeah, I've got a list of the seasonals, and I will be sharing that with everyone in our Trade the Markets webinar that we will be having, if I can find the slide on that, on the 22nd of this month, along with the setups and the strategies, how to trade these things, the executions, what we're doing. You also get for $97, uh, it's going to be a, a two-hour webinar and it usually goes probably three. You get a, a two weeks in our live trading room, which also includes the mentoring sessions that we have on Wednesday for our hump day hangout. And we cover all of these things in there, guys. Uh, along with this, uh, myself and Michael Sullivan, Every day in our trading room, people come in there and we're trading live. And not only are we trading live, but we're trying to teach as much as possible. Uh, you take a look at it. I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of this. Smart, start small. If you're new to trading, you can. A lot of people are going to laugh. A lot of people will throw sticks at it. A lot of people will do different things. I concentrate a lot on showing people in teaching people how to make $50 a day. I uh, just showed the seasonal on soybeans was opposite one year from next to next. Yep. And so how is that helpful? The key is, do you know how to trade it? It makes, I didn't say it was going to go in the same direction every year. That's the key. Because the question was this. You just showed that the seasonal on soybeans was opposite one year from the next, so how is this helpful? Helpful is you don't care what direction it's going, you want it to move. And it's not only soybeans, it's other markets. And you not only exactly on the holidays, but it's also around different days like this seasonal trade at St. Patrick's Day. What market was that? I'll share it with you all in, our, in the... Uh, webinar that we're going to be doing. Now, it, like I was mentioning, a lot of people want to make a living in this. I've been doing it for over 30 years. My, my teaching point is this. Can you make $50 a day and do it repetitively? If you can't, then what makes you think you're going to be able to earn a living off of it? Off of this, we're going to cover some different things and setups we're going to do some money management things in here that will help you. But would it help you if you took a $5,000 account and you could make $50 a day and do it consistently? Do the math on it and do the math out for five years. If you've got a plan, uh, maybe a five-year plan that you're working on, see what happens if you make $50 a day. If you're trading the E-mini S&P or corn, soybeans, wheat, that's four ticks. I call it my four tick trader. 
that's over a 200% return a year. That's right. Would you mind taking that if you could earn $50 a day? A lot of people go, I want to earn $500 a day. I want to make $100,000 in the market. There, I'm going to trade 200 days. Now, there's 250 trading days a year. And if you can make $400 a day, you'd be earning $100,000. But what makes you think you're going to earn that if you can't earn $50 a day? First of all, you've got to take baby steps off of it. And your baby steps in here, you've got to learn to walk. And then you've got to go more. But I can tell you, if you can earn $50 a day at the end of five years and never earning more on a per contract basis of $50 a day, I'll show you how you can make an astronomical amount moving a $5,000 account, $50 a day for five years, and, and then just all you have to do, if you get so proficient at earning $50 a day, all you have to do is when you put in a trade, click the total number of contracts that you're trading from one to two then increase it from two to three, and then from three to four, four to five. And if you can earn that same $50 a day, you'll see that you can do this for a living and make quite a nice sum of money. Now, what are we going to do? We'll cover different things in, our, in the holiday trade webinar that I'll be doing. If you want to do that, uh, where'd it go? It's in here someplace. $97. Is all it cost you. That's two days of the $50 per day. That's pretty cheap. Uh, if I, when I started 30 years ago, if I'd have had somebody that had said, hey, give me $100 and I'll sit down with you for a couple of hours and I'll just give you more than you can handle. And that's what I try to do. Uh, you come in our trading room and uh, we continue to teach, we continue to trade. That's assuming you make money every day. Exactly, that's right. It's assuming you make money $50 a day. The key is, can you make $50 a day? And that's what your goal. You've got to have, don't, you know, you put out there, hey, I'm going to make $1,000 a day. Okay, uh, just write me the check and send it to me because you'll probably blow out your account. Can you make 50 uh, what if it hits your stops one day? It, it is going to hit your stops one day. And then you're going to have a day like I had yesterday. You put on one contract and you manage it right, and you may have a $490 day trading the E-mini S&P on one contract. That How many days does that take care of? Yes, you are going to have stops hit. Absolutely, positive. I can guarantee you you're going to struggle trading one contract, one of the hardest things to trade is one contract, guys. Now, Hump Day Hangout. We do this on Wednesdays. We come in here and we spend an a hour or so teaching. Now, a lot of people saying, well, this is all in the futures. I like to trade stocks. Well, have you ever looked at holiday trades for the equities? You look at this, Christmas, December 24th. Oops. Apple. Hey, computer. Pat, we, are, we have like uh, about a minute left. Okay, backed off the day after Christmas. Uh, and let me go back in here and hit some of these other ones that we've got. Here was a move that we got in uh, corn. This was uh, the move in here after Labor Day, a move of over $8,000 in 20 trading days trading one contract of corn. Does it work? Yep, it works. Cattle, how about this? Anybody heard uh, 11, 27, 14? That would have been around Thanksgiving after that $4,000 move. It's, it's best to trade fund. I trade technically, guys. I don't trade fundamentally. Regardless of your analysis, you still have to do one thing. You've got to be able to ask questions in here. You've got to know what your time frames, what your risk, what your profit targets, all these different things. And if you want to do it, Go to tradethesystem.com forward slash easy holiday trade webinar. It's $97. Two hours. Hope you all do it. Tradethesystem.com forward slash easy. Sign up for it. 
and uh, we'd love to have you. Guys, I can show you a lot of different things in here. For 30 years of trading, uh, I've, I've seen a lot happen. It's still showing soybeans. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Let me sh let me th let me th show it up here. Man, showed you some good slides in here too. 